jeans are the right sort of thing for an intern to be wearing round the hospital, Craig. I don't, Mum. I take them off in the hospital. Oh, that's even worse. What about your patients? No, they wear pyjamas. <laughs> Real pyjamas or those hospital ones that make everyone look so sick? Mum, they are sick. That's the problem with your hospital, Craig. Everyone looks so sick. <laughs> very depressing for a mother to visit her son at work. Yeah, Mum, we should stop doing that. It's becoming very embarrassing, oh, you know. Craig, I only pop in when I'm passing. Pop in? Mum, no other intern's mother stands in the hospital foyer and applauds his son after delivering another baby. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Well, can't you be proud on the telephone? I tried that and you kept hanging up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I take them off. All right. Oh, Mum, please, please don't insist that every new mother name a baby after me. That young couple last week got very embarrassed. What's wrong with Craig for a name? It was a girl. <laughs> Craig it then. Mum, Craig it doesn't sit so well when your surname is Wing Chow. And you have two brothers called Whispering Jade and Trembling Duff. Whispering Jade and Trembling Dove. Oh, my goodness, that makes John Michael Housen sound so boring. <laughs> Where did they get those names? From Vietnam. They were boat people. Boat people? Oh, oh, poor things. Oh, it must be awful being a refugee. Oh, it's not the life for me, Craig. Still, as long as they're happy, that's the main thing. Yes, Mum. <sighs> Are you sure they were boat people? Mm. They didn't look like it. Their feet weren't even wet. <laughs> no, they don't live on the boats anymore because the quarantine department had to burn them and sink them all. How are they going to get home? They're not. They're going to live here. They're going to become Australian. <coughs> not with a name like Whispering Jade, they're not. Oh, <laughs> what if they want to become a footballer or, or run a tow truck business? Couldn't he change his name to Greg? I'm sure he will, Mum. Oh. And I'm sure there must be a future somewhere for Trembling Dove. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think it'll be in the Boilermakers Union. <laughs> Gosh, look at those legs. Oh, how they've grown. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, don't you remember, Craig, when you were a baby, they were only that long? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, now look at them, all grown up and going to university. <laughs> Yeah, well, now they're going into the lounge room to read the paper. Oh, good boy, Craig. <laughs> oh, I suppose he'll make a good doctor. And I wouldn't go and see one without his jeans on. You, I'm home. Oh, hello. Ted, you're home. Of course I'm home. Bloody poodle from up the road attacked me again. Why? Because it likes attacking me. <laughs> Bloody imported dogs. They're all inbred, you know, like them wog dogs. <laughs> Yeah, the only time they shut their mouths is when it's clamped around your leg. You shouldn't provoke him. I wasn't provoking him, I was just having a game of catch the brick. As long as it was only a game. <laughs> Why are you home so early? Mm. Last time you were home this early, the war had finished. I'm well, not 100% bonza, Phil. Oh, Ted, what's wrong? I'm crook. Oh, don't tell me. You've broken a leg. No! An arm? No, no, it's me tooth woman. Which tooth? Well, I don't know, it's... I don't know them all by name. It's, it's, it's one of them, them ones that squash take, you know, it, it, it's sore as billy huh? oh, oh, oh. Normally, normally, I mean, that sort of pain would keep me home all day, but a man in my position has got to go to work. Why? It was payday. <laughs> if hadn't been for that bloody electric hand dryer, I would have been home hours ago. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's happened now? The whole world's plotting against me as usual. Oh, what happened? Those horrible little drug-crazed apprentices know that at precisely 9.30, I visit the men's room. What for? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you think I go to the men's room for? Read the paper? There's nothing written on toilet paper. Newspaper? To read the newspaper? No, that's in the afternoon. Oh. Anyway, there I am washing my hands at the basin, and who should walk in but old Sir Basil himself. Oh, gosh, Ted. What was he doing there? What do you mean, what was he doing there? What do you think he was doing there? He's a knight. I know that. He uses the one Mark Royal Dalton. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd take the opportunity to impress upon him that I'm not just any clot, but, but real executive material, so I decided to chat to him about his sporting interest. Did you think that was really a good idea? Tell me, Sir Basil, I said. Have you got something running in the Melbourne Cup? 
No, he said, I think you're confused. I've entered the America's Cup. Oh, oh I said, where's that on, uh, Flemington or Randwick? <laughs> Neither, he said. It's eight miles off the east coast of America. Oh, yeah, I said. Good mud runner, is he? <laughs> <laughs> That's when me world caved in, Phil. I hit the button on the hand dryer and suddenly, whack, me nose was squashed up against the wall. Why? Them grotty little apprentices had reversed the fan and sucked me tie straight up the nostril. Batsy Basil, what did he do? He wiped his hands on the back of my shirt. <laughs> Took maintenance three hours to get me out. Mind you, Phil, you know, I know Sir Basil is a knight and all that sort of thing, but I reckon he's a bit scratching for a quid. Oh, why? Because he walked off with my solver. Oh. G'day, Dad. Yeah, what are you doing here? Eating an apple? Without trousers? Yeah, they taste better that way. <laughs> the zipper doesn't get stuck in your teeth. <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Smarty University Legs. I've had quite enough of your devil-may-care apple attitude. Apples don't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> Where are your trousers? Mum's sewing them up. <gasps> you haven't split them again, have you, you randy little animal? <laughs> oh, you university mob are all the same. Sex, sex, sex. And if it isn't sex, it's eating an apple without your trousers on. No wonder the country's in a mess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Stop yeah. saying that. Bloody kids. They take their trousers off and they think they own the world. When I was a boy... He's gone, Ted. What? He's left the room. <laughs> That'd be right. Right in the middle of me childhood. Well, you can tell me about when you were a boy. It's not the same, Phil. You wouldn't understand. Why not? Well, it's years since you've been a boy. <laughs> there you are. Now, you listen to me. Oh, right what? Don't you come to raw what with me. Now, what was I talking about? Uh, you don't remember, do you? Of course I do. No, you just sit there with your mouth flapping in the breeze and all this nonsense pours out of it. How dare you? Everything I say is important and interesting. Important and interesting? What's so important about someone should blow something up? Or load the money on the fridge? Or why when I was a boy? Well, that's where I was, thank you very much. When I was a boy... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, again and again. When I was a boy, we were so poor we couldn't afford apples. The nearest thing we got to an apple was sitting around the table and licking a tea towel from Tasmania. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were so poor that your Uncle Bob and I had to share one pair of trousers. <laughs> if it hadn't been for that vicar's daughter, the whole town would have still thought we were Siamese twins. What vicar's daughter, Ted? Tickle me grandmother, Phil. You're not Craig. Well, go on, Ted. Tell me, what did the vicar's daughter do? Oh, well, she said come around the corner. What, Ted? What did she do? I don't know. It was Bob pulled a paper bag over me head. Mmm. A wonderful, probably the greatest pavlova ever. Oh, Bruno, you're just <laughs> saying that. Yeah, but I mean it. In fact, I would say that tonight's chocolate-coated marshmallow pavlova was even better than last week's legendary cherry-ripe mousse. <laughs> Thank you, Bruno. And you know your tongue's imported. <laughs> Ted, you haven't touched yours. Can't. Tooth hurts. Oh, hookums. Those nasty little Derek Decay taking his nasty little pickaxe and chipped away at Teddle's toothy peak. Watch it, Wog. Oh, well, you're such a sissy. The way you carry on, you'd think it was the end of the world. Look, if I die tonight, you're all going to be very sorry. Oh, Dad, you're not going to die. I am, I can feel it. Typical, this always happens to me. It's me last supper and I can't even eat it. <laughs> I hate dying hungry. Oh, Ted, stop it. You are being silly. You're such a big sook. I am not so too so there. I'm dying and nobody cares. Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Look, Dad, admittedly you'll have a little pain, but... Pain? He wouldn't be in pain. He's taken enough aspirin to stun an elephant. You could rip his right arm off and he wouldn't know until he went to lean on a bar. <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Smarty Sardine Sniffer. If it weren't for your mob, if it weren't for your mob, he wouldn't have toothache. What? No, it's true. We never had plaque till your mob came out here. They were carriers. <coughs> Great boatloads of wogs jabbering on the wharves and off into a purple cloud of plaque germs. <laughs> You're mad, Ted. Oh, it's true. All your ethnic soccer players started it. All that kissing. All your Genos and Giuseppes slobbering over our Rons and Freds started the plaque epidemic. <laughs> Ridiculous. Plaque didn't come from Italy. It's always been here. Oh, I know that. I know we've always had our Aussie plaque for centuries, but that's harmless. I mean, the Aboriginals, they used to hunt it where Luna Park is now. <laughs> oh, yeah, marsupial plaque, was it? No, 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 no. It used to come out during the day. 
But then the, the first fleet decimated it. And then by the time the logs arrived, our teeth were sitting ducks. Dad, this is crazy. There are no little marsupials called plaque. It's a bacteria thing that grows on your teeth. How would you know, Miss Smarty Camel Nose? I work for a dentist. What would a dentist know about plaque? Everything. They discovered it. They did not. Mrs Marsh did. <laughs> this country owes a lot to Mrs Marsh. She owes a lot to that woman. She is a woman, isn't she? Dear, give me your plate and I'll take it away. No, Phil. Look, if I can't eat it, I'm just going to look at it. Well, what about your dessert? Oh, fair go, Phil. I haven't finished looking at my main course yet. I'll eat it. No, get your hands off that and your eyes. Don't be ridiculous. Listen, if anybody's going to look at my dessert, I am, so rack off. But come on, Tattles, you're not going to eat it. Right, that's it, I'm telling on you. Philly, keeps looking at my oh. dessert. Stop just sitting this immediately. You're behaving like a child. If you're not going to eat your dinner, I know a million Indian children who'd love it. I'm not giving my food to India. I fought and died for that chop. We'll give it to the dogs. Ow! Oh. How do you too, white man? <laughs> you seen General Custer around here? What are you talking about, Wog? You know General Custer, great white general who go crazy, you know, loco, bananas. You must know him, we call him Banana Custer. <laughs> oh, that's very funny, Fred. Yeah. Did you get a great, it's a joke. Yeah, I, mean, I know what it's about, Mark. It, it was a very funny joke, Fred, and I tell her, I got it first time up, he didn't have to tell me anything about <laughs> Funny, <laughs> it's not funny. Ow! Ow! Ow. <laughs> Stop doing that. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Stop laughing. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> all right, everybody, that's enough. We've all had our jokes. We're not here for fun. Let's turn on the Sullivans. Come on, we. Fishes. Oh! No, no, no. We've missed the Sullivans. Look at the time. They'll all be in bed by now. <laughs> Why would they be in bed now? Well, there's nothing else to do in Melbourne. Except steal a tram and drive it into the Yarra. <laughs> all right, all right. But I haven't suffered such pain since Rommel's personal tank ran over me foot. Rubbish. You broke your toenail when you tripped over one of your own wristles. <laughs> it was a tank wound, I tell you. I was there when it happened. Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Look, Dad, it's silly to put up with this pain. I know we've got a free hour in the morning. Come in at nine and get it fixed. I'm not going to your dentist. Why not? A man's a dill. God, I'm not going to have him groping around inside me mouth. <laughs> I mean, what would he know about anything? Why shouldn't he? He employed you for a start. <laughs> he's a good dentist. In the short time he's been there, he's built up a fine practice. Listen, I don't want one that's still practicing. I want one that's fully trained. <laughs> you see a dentist. Don't need to see a dentist. I know what it is. You're scared. Sca scared? Scared? Me? Scared? 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 <laughs> Listen, mate, I wouldn't know the meaning of fear. I wouldn't know how to spell the word. Well, you can't spell dog either, but you still run when you see one. Especially that poodle from up the road. What poodle? Well, I saw you. No, you couldn't have. I had a stocking over me face. <laughs> you haven't been annoying that poor little poodle again. No, Phil, I was just teaching him how to catch a shovel. <laughs> Why would he want a shovel? To bury his bones, of course. Well, are you coming to the dentist tomorrow, Dad? No. Ted? Oh, all right. Ow! Oh. Your x-rays will be processed in a minute. Oh, oh good. Oh, I can hardly wait to see them, my, my x-rays. What are you reading? <laughs> uh, the National Geographic. Uh, uh, the articles. I'm uh, reading it for the articles. I'm, I'm not looking at the pictures of new Tahitian dancing women washing in the river. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no, boring. I mean, once you've seen one, one pair, pair of pair of waterfalls, oh, you've seen them all. <laughs> no, no, it's an interesting article on nude herring fishermen in Iceland. Oh, yeah, nude herring fishermen, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah, And why have they got grass skirts on? It was their day off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where were we now? Are the x-rays ready? Are they? Mm. Ah, why he needs to get pictures of teeth beats me. I mean, he must have seen hundreds of teeth. I mean, if he doesn't know what teeth look like now, he should pack it in and try something else. What, like <laughs> nude herring fishing? Yeah, why not? Looks like good fun to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Yeah, yeah. Get out of it, you little perv! <laughs> Boo! I <laughs> got you, stupid bloody fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch it, mate. Yeah, I'm talking to you behind the diver there. You just watch it, or I'll chuck a jug element in there. <laughs> Watch it. You all right, Dad? 
Yeah, I'm just, uh, I was just uh, talk, you talking to your fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, what did he say? Nothing. Good. Right, your x-rays are through. Oh, oh do I get a discount? What for? <laughs> Being your father. Oh, don't worry, I've already discounted that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pulpit, come and sit down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, I mean in the chair. What do you think, this is a pork chop? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean sit in the dentist's chair. No, that's, a, no, that's your chair, that chair, you sit in it. I mean, I know what it's like when it's your own chair. I've got me a very own chair at home, and God help anybody who tries to sit in my <laughs> shouting at me. She's always shouting at me. I don't know why you hired her in the first place. Why did you hire her? Dad, chair, sit! See? There you go. She's shouting again. Dad! All right, all right. Uh, Mr. Bullpit, uh, may I call you Ted? Does it mean I get a discount? No. <laughs> oh, well, suit yourself. Ted, we haven't been formally introduced. My name's Albus Fabian Jones. Why? My mother was a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> a group of what? <laughs> Don't worry, it was a joke. <laughs> oh, you reckon, do you? <laughs> well, with a name like that, I generally try to get in first, you see. Get in where? Oh, doesn't matter. Hmm. Well, why'd you say it, then? <laughs> I don't know. A man's a fool. <laughs> Did you escape from somewhere? <laughs> Mr. Bullpit, Green has told me a lot about you, and I must admit I didn't believe it. <laughs> oh. But now I do. <laughs> Anyway, I got your x-rays here, so you just lie back and relax, and I'll have a look at our problem, eh? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, I see. Gee, these look almost dead. <laughs> yes, they don't look too healthy, do they? Still, they've had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, look at the roots all rotting away and little things eating at them. <laughs> they've had it all right. Mm, what do you think? Well, it's only one thing to do. What? Rip them all out. <laughs> Now, Mr. Bull, but this won't hurt a bit. Tickle me, granular! <laughs>
come on. All right, I'm not paying for this morning's appointment. Oh, yes, you are. Don't you threaten me with pain, girly. I'm a known fainter. Oh, come on. Thelma! <laughs> Pulpit. Critters, explain what we're going to do? Yeah, charge me full price. <laughs> and what else? You're going to hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. Well, what are all those sharp things for? Persuading people to pay their bills. <laughs> Very funny, Ted. <clears throat> now, would you like gas? I don't know. How much a gallon do you charge? <laughs> no, I don't mean gases and Caltex. Well, I'm not having that Amoco stuff in my tank. No, no, no. No, no, I wouldn't put that in because of that bloody final filter strains the power out of it. <laughs> I mean gas to knock you out. You know, pain-killing gas. Aha, uh -huh, gotcha. You said there wouldn't be any pain. Dad, take the gas. No, no, no. He'll take me wallet when I'm out to it. <laughs> Sorry, Elvis, but you can see what he's like. Don't worry. Why don't you go on home? I live close by to Ted. I can drop him off later. Oh, you sure? Take it from me. It's going to be a pleasure. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> Dad. Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. Right, Ted. Let's get this over as quick as we can, eh? Yeah, yeah, good idea. It was a very good idea of you sending her off. Injuries and women don't mix. I remember I saw a lot of it during the war. <laughs> no place for the squeamish, eh, Doc? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Let's uh, just put this little sucker thing in here, okay, eh? Okay, right, right. And a oh. few of these here. Uh, uh -huh. Good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Uh -huh. Okay, Ted? Yeah, fine. Right. 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 Here we go. <laughs> Incidentally, I got a call from my wife a little while ago. Oh, yeah? yeah yes. Yeah. I hear you painted our dog blue. Oh, yeah. So you see, Mum, Dad thought we were talking about his teeth. Oh. And naturally, he panicked. And then, of course, Dad being Dad, he did what came naturally. What? He ran. Oh. <laughs> talking about you know who, I can't tell you how worried I am. What's going to happen when the owner of that poodle finds out his dog's been painted blue? What do you mean? Oh, well, what happened? Yeah. Oh, in oh, here, oh. in here, Ted, your father was... Someone should blow down to stop. <laughs>